Hello, this is Rory with the Love Chat, and today's topic is warning signs. Now, this is video number 137. If you have a question you'd like for me to consider featuring on the Love Chat, please write it in a comment below. And if you enjoy these videos, I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Also, if you'd like to do Skype or email coaching, just visit my website, thelovechat.net slash coaching, while all my coaching services are currently discounted. Now then, let's talk about warning signs that a relationship is about to fail. This is a list I've compiled of some of the more and less known signs that a relationship that you are in, either current or future, is headed for some rocky times. Now, a lot of you here are here because of a breakup that you've already had. However, you can use this information to identify problems from that relationship that you had, so you can move forward as a more effective and eligible partner. Or, you can use this information for future relationships, a list of things to keep an eye out on. So, let's get right into it. Number one on the list of warning signs, and these of course are in no particular order, is that your partner begins hiding their phone out of nowhere, or suddenly when they didn't used to. And this one can be pretty alarming because we almost immediately notice it. Usually your partner is very free with their phone. They don't need to take their phone to the bathroom or hide their phone or even put a lock on their phone. And you might think, what? I don't care. I've never looked through your phone before. Why do I suddenly care now? And Maybe you've even confronted them on it, and they gave you an answer that wasn't really satisfying, or didn't really make sense. That is a definite warning sign. Number two is that they begin mentioning a new person very often. Now, at first, this can seem very innocent. They made a new friend. Awesome. We like when our partners make new friends and experience life outside of us because we want this relationship to be healthy. It could be that new guy who started working at the job. Or maybe it's that new girl that just joined the class, and they're making quick friends. At first, this isn't a bad thing. It's not bad to have new friends and people in your life. The time that this turns into a warning sign is when this person is brought up more than is normal for a typical friend. Number three, and this one is quite obvious, is that sex stops. Any form of intimacy stops. And if this has happened in your relationship... It's a definite warning sign, and you want to start looking around your relationship and seeing, all right, what's going on, what happened, what did just happen, or what's happening in the future that may cause some anxiety. It could be a big move. It could be a life change. It could be a death in the family. But if you see that sex and intimacy has stopped, that's a big warning sign, so pay attention to that. Next is, number four, they aren't as available. You'll find that when you try and set dates with your partner, it's almost impossible. They always have something going on or some reason as to why they can't hang out. And this goes right along with number five, which is that they are distancing themselves from you. They're making you less important in their life for perhaps other friends or other events or things that don't seem very important and that they didn't necessarily care about before, but suddenly are taking up most of their time or attention, like work. Number six is a big one, and I didn't notice this trend until very recently, and I've looked to my own coachings to see that this has definitely formed a bit of a trend that maybe will help you guys, and that is spending extra time on social media. I can pull this one from my personal life. My own partner would spend, I don't know, hours on Facebook and Instagram, and throughout the previous eight and a half years of our relationship... My partner never really cared about Facebook or Instagram, so it was very confusing when I see this happen out of nowhere. It could be that you notice that your partner is adopting a behavior similar to this, where they're taking interest in something that didn't usually interest them, like social media, or a new class, or joining a gym and obsessing over the gym and always needing to go to the gym at weird random hours. It doesn't necessarily relate to social media, but... You'll notice their patterns of behavior changing, and you've been with them for quite a while, and so you notice when their patterns are changing, and this is a big one. If they're spending a lot of time on social media or other distractions, that means that they're trying to get away from the thought of you or the thought of something negative, like a breakup. Number seven is they project a lot of suspicion onto you, seemingly out of nowhere. So have you ever been scrolling on Instagram, and your partner will be very curious what you're looking at, and who you're talking to, and who was that girl or that guy. Out of nowhere, all of this suspicion and perhaps even jealousy is exuding from them, and you're very 
confused because you didn't do anything and you're not talking to anybody and it's almost laughable that you would do that. But all of this suspicion that they have and they're projecting it onto you, this may mean, I want to be careful here, keyword may mean that there's somebody in the background in their lives. Often when we are guilty of something, we'll project our feelings of that situation onto somebody else. And this can be seen as a form of gaslighting, or rather can turn into full-blown gaslighting. Number eight is, if you live together, they are avoiding coming home, or they're coming home very late. You'll notice that they begin coming home very late and having very bizarre reasons as to why they're coming home late. Yet another example of something my partner did. She would often tell me she didn't want to come home. And when I asked why, the answer I got was never satisfying. And so if you are noticing that your partner is avoiding coming home or is coming home very late, 2, 3, 4 in the morning, regularly, something's up. Number nine, and this one's painful because so many of us have experienced this before, is they begin joking about a breakup. <laughs> I wonder what life would be like if we broke up. <laughs> That'd be crazy, right? Wouldn't it? Or, once again, they begin projecting those feelings onto you. Statements like, you don't want to be with me, whatever, you're going to break up with me one day anyway, sort of as a gaslighting way of making it your fault. Number 10, your gut feeling. And I know how dangerous it can be to trust intuition, especially when we're going through an anxious moment, and yet we need to be very clear here. And I study the numbers, that's part of what behavioral analysis is, and yet there's something to be said for intuition. The gut feeling is that something is up. Don't ignore that feeling, especially if you're seeing it paired with some of the other warning signs that we've talked about here. The last sign that I'll be covering today is number 11, future plans stop, and they become a thing of the past. Your partner is becoming very non-committal about doing anything with you in the future that involves any type of plan or trip or vacation or outing of any sort. They always find a reason or an excuse or a, yeah, we'll see when we get closer or some way to not commit to that date. It's important that we keep our eyes open and that in this moment we ask ourselves, okay, well, what's going on? Let me take a step back. Let me get some perspective. Let me breathe. Let me hit the gym. Let me focus on me right now. And that if that breakup is imminent, you know what to do. Agree with the breakup. Tell them you don't want it, but you respect their decision and to give you a call if you change your mind, and then you go immediately into no contact and the personal work. I know it seems scary, but it's okay. You're going to be fine. Remember that action based out of fear will only work to your detriment. So the very first thing you should do if you're being faced with a breakup is do something to alleviate your anxiety and your fear. And we have tons of videos covering that. But right now, if you want the best possible chance of healthy reconciliation, you need to have a healthy reconciliation with yourself. And so, as we said in the last video, permit yourself to heal. That's all I have for today. If you found my video helpful, I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Please leave a comment below and tell me what topics you want me to cover in the future. Additionally, if you'd like extra videos every week, private live streams with me, and free giveaways of my book upon release, just visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash thelovechat. Oh, and don't forget, we do have a community Discord, which is basically like a forum that also has voice chat and an instant messaging service. Discord is an app that is free to download and use, and all you need to do is go to the description and click on the Discord link, create an account, and there you go. I hope to see you there. Until next time.